What it do, what it do, it's your boy Mo Hustle, and we are now live on the hot seat in Houston, Texas. Today I got a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself, bro. Uh, my name is Chad Alexander from Third Ward. Been away since about 2011. Got back to Houston in the great state of Texas, 2022, November. And I don't know, somehow I made it here with you. So. Oh, man. So, uh, so how long you been in Texas, in, in Houston? Um, I got back. So, before Texas, I was in Columbia since about the end of 2017. Like, hold on, like Columbia, Texas, or Columbia? The La República, pues. There you go. Okay, that's what we just want to just want to make that clear. You know what I'm saying? All right, that's dope. So, so how was it out there? I mean. What kind, is this? What are we rated here on this, on this podcast? Can I even say? What do you mean? Like rated, rated R, rated P. Oh no, yeah, you you can you, you can talk your shit. Yikes. Talk your shit. No, but Columbia was good. Um, there's a lot of business opportunity actually no. in Colombia. No. If you go to like Medellin, hmm. you have a lot of Americans there. You have a lot of like Dutch there. Yeah. It's a good place to like get your hustle on. It's dope. You know, across the board. How are the women? Are they nice? Yo hablo a todos mis colombianas en este momento para decir que siempre te amo yeah. en mi corazón. Colombians mm. are the best. I'm going hit that. I'm going hit that. I mean, yeah. be, all single dudes. Right. Are, or better yet, all dudes who are about to get married or already married, yeah. just do yourself a favor and put Colombia out of your mind. Because <laughs> sincerely, it's like dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous. It's, it's just to, no disrespect to my American chicks, but also like mm. on a global perspective, it's like get competitive. Right. Mm. They, 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 they put it down, huh? It's just a different kind of way of even being in a relationship bro yeah you know like more affection easier like just man i you know let's 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 talk about that man because mm. that's that's one of my topics right mm. there man mm. you know mm. that's, that's one of my topics man like <laughs> like man i'm gonna be honest with you please do you know i always thought i had to go to like the philippines to get a loving mm. woman you know what i mean because out here it's like it's not even love no more it's like they like they got a whole list of shit that you gotta have to make them happy here. Like, and if you don't got every damn thing, then right. they like, you ain't shit. You know right. what I'm saying? Right, I mean. So, so what do you think about that? It's like, where do you start? Yeah. <laughs> There's, I mean, the American woman slash just the American mind today has been um, like led astray. Yeah. where men don't know what it is to be a man mm. and women no longer know what it is to be a woman but like this is how we've been sort of retrained yeah. this idea of it as like it's them or uh, them and us right what? man versus woman where you just got to give back to understand <coughs> are we not in this together or like or what right. and so yeah the american women they lost that sense of like just natural sweetness, you know. Right. I mean, I feel like a lot of women these days think that men want all of the extra shit. When I feel like men just probably just want to be loved, and you know, they don't want to go through uh, all kinds of crazy shit. If they had gone to work, they come home, they just want to be loved on. They don't want to hear right. all that drama and shit. Right. You feel me? Right. And, and you know, it's like none of that right. shit's really important. To, to a man, really, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, that's like a nice yeah. idea, but I don't know if that'll ever happen. It's never going to happen like that, huh? Damn it. Women are women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And men are men. Right, for sure, for sure. And so... I mean, but you could get a cool-ass woman, though. Yeah, for sure. You know, that, 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 that really do it. And I think the Philippines, the Philippines and the Filipino uh, women try to say that, you know, they're more... Uh, down to earth and more loving and yeah, and all that, and they take care of them man very well. So that's 
why I was just like, man, that might be where it's at for me. You know what I mean? Why not, bro? <clears throat> yeah. Did he speak to Galo? No. You need to get, that's the best way. That's the one. Is, huh? That's that shit. I don't know if it's that shit, but no. find a good Filipino chick. No. You know? And whether you speak their language or not, they speak English. Right? Yeah. Well, well, I'm actually right now, I'm not single right now. I just got with a native chick, so. What does that mean, bro? It's some, it's with a native chick, she from a, she from the reservation. Oh, like yeah, na- like yeah native, in Arizona like, and shit. Yeah. Super local. Yeah, yeah, like like in Arizona. Interesting. And so she came down and. Uh, How did you meet her? Uh, yeah, I, I had met her, and uh, it's it just like when she came down, bro. Like, uh, I like felt the difference though. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm-hmm. she just chill. But also, I had to disconnect a little bit, like come to work for two days, go back home. That way, you ain't you don't get tired of each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then when I when I get home, she happy and shit. We good. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, it's just but like, she don't nag and she don't call me. Right. She just lets me do my thing. Right. Uh, you know, I do call her like once or twice a day. Right. Check up on her, make sure she good, make sure she ate something. Right. 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 Make sure she's not dead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I I do leave her at home with everything. That she wants, so she good. You know what I mean? That's, She's well taken care of. I mean, that's, again, like, yeah. the, the fact that men and women in America forgot what it is to be that with, with what you just described in your mm-hmm. relationship is like simplicity. Mm-hmm. It's like a call to go back to something more simple right. when it comes to the men, man, woman dynamic. Yeah. Something more natural. Like you found, it sounds like with, yeah. we got to go native again. Basically. Well, I mean, you know, I feel like, you know, the, you know, first I was like, I'm gonna bring her down here. I don't want her to be around all these people because then they're gonna be, she's gonna be influenced easily by everybody else and a lot of the negativity and shit. You know what I'm saying? But then, man, I couldn't hold her back from meeting people. You know what I mean? So I, I brought her around to everybody just so they can see and um, and she does well. She's all right. She's cool. But yeah, man. So. Um, so damn, man, you was in Colombia, man. I actually be looking up videos of Colombia. Like, I, I've seen them ride through the streets right. in them little uh, bike carts or whatever they take people. Okay. You know, like. In, in Colombia. Yeah, in Colombia, okay. yeah. I think it's in Medellin, actually. But, um, yeah, we're showing the little stores and, you know, there's some hoods out there. Some, I mean, it's some, some crazy shit going on out there. <laughs> like, I, when I walk around the streets, like, I, I you gotta watch your back and shit. Make sure you good. I have a fucking big ass dagger. Oh shit! For everyone to see and understand. Like, if you wanna try, it's gonna be a complicated yeah. endeavor. You yeah. know, cause pe- I mean, yeah, like it can happen. Like I know people who've been robbed. You know, all kinds. You know, and mostly yeah. Colombian. Yeah. And if I could carry out there, I would too. What do you think is the the the, the craziest shit you ever ran into out there? I say I don't do crazy. It's like what? But but you know what I'm saying. What what is the 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 wildest shit you ever seen out there? Like heard about or seen? Cause that's, I don't know. I mean, so where I lived, you could see where Pablo lived. Right. The building that got bombed. Okay. Right in the back of that. Like I realized I was in Pablo Bar, Pablo Escobar's neighborhood. Hmm. As where I was staying, they started pointing out. Like, start telling you the history. Right, it's, you wouldn't, you would never know. Hmm. You know, I mean, that was kind of not shocking. But it did he have a lot of family members out there that you ran into or anything like that? Uh, Pablo. Yeah. It's like a cousin. Like a cousin and shit. If you go to um, Centro Oviedo, like the the mall. Yeah. Pablo's like hitman. That's where he would chill. But hmm. it'd be like going to the Galleria Dope. and seeing. That kind of place, you know. Right. But he got into he, I mean, he got into trouble a couple of years ago. I think they threw his ass back in jail. <clears throat> That's crazy. But um, no, nah, Colombia's a good place. Like I said, it's there's much for anyone who's <coughs> wants to get something popping mm. and and wants to do it like in a in a country where the opportunity is huge. Mm-hmm. Like Colombia's a good place. Yeah. As long as they're president doesn't 
take the country down the road. What do you think the cost of living is out there, or, or from what, from your experience? Uh, very affordable. It's like here, a normal salary. There, you, you're, you have your penthouse, right? Mm -hmm. You have your house help. I Listen, I don't know if you if y'all already knew this, but house help is essential. Mm. You learn that there because yeah. you can afford it because the dollar stretch is so so much. Yeah. So, I mean, just just to give you an example, you have to be on a penthouse, house help, and I don't know, the money maybe goes about three times longer. What do, what do you think the average rent is like for for a one bedroom apartment? Like in a good area? Yeah. Uh, like four hundred dollars. So yeah. Three four hundred. Exactly. That's how it is in the Philippines too. Exactly, exactly. I mean, That's cool. Fifty two million in COP. I mean, for a thousand dollars, what do you think you'd be living like? Yeah. In a house. In the penthouse with the the penthouse. house. <laughs> with the pool and shit or what? With the pool and shit. Yes. Oh shit. Sure. I'm coming to Colombia, yeah, man. It's <laughs> shit. Come on, we like uh, get your cha cha cha. Yeah. You know. Uh. Um. I mean, a lot of people I see black folk all the time. Yeah. Getting their teeth done. I see you niggas. Yeah. Just. So they go to Colombia to get the teeth done. I just said going through the intercontinental. For sure. Getting, getting their teeth. Yeah, a lot of people go to Mexico too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and a lot more people are exploring Colombia yeah, now. Colombia, yeah. You know, it's it's exactly. it's a really good place. What do you think is some of the most popular uh, places to eat at over there? Like, get to go to the shit that you miss right now, or what is the what is the the, the best plate that you miss? Like you're like, man. La fritanga. La fritanga. Aborajado con queso. Ya tú sabes todos mis colombianos que más pues. <laughs> Damn, that was it. It's like a it's like a fried plantain. Okay. Right? That's what I figured it was gonna be. And then it was like it's also with cheese. No oh, shit. Dip that joint in like a hot sauce. Damn. Fucking get three of those shits. Damn. Maybe an, another kind of fritanga, like maybe fried potato. Fritanga, that's boy. Like after the club, bro. Yeah, that's what tell a girl, I'm gonna give you that fritanga. Yeah, that fritanga. <laughs> that extra queso. <laughs> No, that's shit. <laughs> that's that shit right there, man. Girl, girl, you ain't ready for this fritanga. Not ready, though, because I'm going to deep fry your ass. Oh, fried <laughs> banana, dog. That shit crazy. <laughs> that's good shit, man. But, yeah, it's like anyone who's curious and because there's a lot of fear, too, because just, no. just how you think of Colombia. You know? Yeah, yeah, people are already yeah, fucked up in the head from the shit. It's that, but it's also, like, not that. Right. Like don't be. Well, well, it's where you put yourself to. Exactly. <clears throat> and then how you move when you get there. Totally, totally. For sure. Just don't be a doofus. Right. For sure. Don't make yourself a mark. Right. Or as they say, no dar papaya. No dar papaya. Okay. Make yourself a mark. Don't be out there just. Yeah. With the jewelry out. Yeah, yeah. being yeah yeah. But that's the thing. I, I don't. I like to dar papaya. Oh shit. I'm not like tucking papaya. in anything. That's why I carry my dagger. Like right, right. You be like, bitch, what's up? I'm here. Like, I'm going to dress how I want to dress. You wear the chain, somebody fuck with you. Uh, it's, it's over with. No saying, my mind, he killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's yeah. wrong? You yeah, know that's yeah. wrong? Huh. Bad boys. Bad boys. Bad boys, too. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> so, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. Fuck. But, yeah, right. so that's that's... So, 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 did, so did, did you learn the language over there? Mm-hmm. You learned it over there? For sure, for sure. I mean... Oh, so you was over there first, and then you came to H-Town? I mean, I was born and raised in Houston. Houston, and you went out there? I, I mean, so much story in between all of that. All of that, I okay. Mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I mean, telling you know, stories. It's all good, man. You, 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 you can let them know what it is, if you want to. You know? I'm an open book, Yeah. you know? Yeah, so how, how was it for you growing up? Like, did you have both parents? Yes, ooh, thank goodness. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and yeah. both were like, cause, so, topic switch, new paragraph, new line, new yeah. page, Yeah. new book. Right. So, yeah, both my parents, even though they divorced, 
made the decision to make sure they raised me together. Mm. Where, like, we're on care from Caroline to Crawford to Wichita to Rose, you know, just all mm. over Third Ward. But <coughs> okay. most of them were in the neighborhood, so I could just ride the bike. And they gave me that kind of autonomy and that, like, mm -hmm. yeah, so, I mean, they made a conscious decision to raise me together as one. And so, like, a lot of issues that people experience when the parents separate, yeah. like, that one I miss because if there's something happened at school, for example, they show up, like, as a unit and people thought they were, like, married because it was, the focus was the child, was me. Right. And so, like, that went a long way and just, you know, at the end of the day, you want to have complete, fearless children. Hmm. Like, what's the, you know, and this is, matter of fact, we can use this podcast right now to jump into it. Because yeah. Because this, this is the discussion that's not happening. Just talk about it. When it comes to, like, whether it's a political issue, whether you want to talk about, like, black American issues. There's no discussion on hashtag make parenting great again. Right. You talk to teachers about their experience with the kids and the parents, and the parents are like out to lunch. Yeah. And so, you know, like you kind of hit that the nail on the head with this question. Right. Like if we're going to go in this direction. Right, right. You know, um, no. It's okay whether your parents are together or not. What's mm -hmm. the focus? Is yeah. it is it y'all's little? <clears throat> you know, I, I just like to ask that question because some people, you know, had both parents. Some people just had the mom. Some people just had the dad. Some of me ain't had none of them. Mm -hmm. So you know, I just like to ask that question. You know what I mean? Well, and what? So for you, what does that question mean? I mean, it means a lot. I mean, me, I I already didn't have both of them. You did or did not? I didn't. Until a certain age, should I have to go find my mother? Really? Yep, at a certain age, I found her. And, and I brought everybody with me. Okay. It's crazy. Like, I remember actually the other day we were talking about it. <clears throat> there was a, my brother texted me his photo. I said, man, where the hell you get that picture? And I clearly remember taking that picture. It must have been about, shit, six years old probably. And I remember the CPS office I was in, and there was the window behind. And that exact window was when I seen my mom come like we, we didn't even know her she came to visit us out of nowhere after years and we watched her walk away right there boom she came and she gave us uh, me and my brother a wallet and she gave my little sisters a, a little purse and after that she walked away we seen her in the window and that was it we didn't see her for years after that probably shit probably another 10 15 years after you know what I mean? when, that's that's quite a while mm -hmm. she, she she was in and out of prison so, oh, okay, so how did you, so growing up as a child, like, how did you understand? I mean, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. I was in, in group homes and shit. Right. Like, now I think about it. I wasn't thinking about it then. I was like, man, I'm, I grew up with some of the most fucked up people, you know what I mean? Because, right. you know, they all went through some crazy ass shit. Mm -hmm. Like, either abuse or parents in jail like mine or some gang banging shit or some drug shit or some all kinds of crazy shit. So... I just recently thought about this, like, uh, less than a month ago. I was like, man, I really thought back. I said, man, I was around a lot of some of the most hurt people, basically. You know what I'm saying? They were all going through something. I remember a kid, bro. Um, he had a, a – well, there were several, several of them that had burn marks. Mm -hmm. Like, this one dude, his whole foot was burnt. Mm -hmm. And, like, he would put cocoa butter on it every night. You know what I'm saying? Hoping that he would – you know, yeah. come back or whatever, you know what I mean? I've seen people burn, like, burn arm, all kinds of shit. But, yeah, man, uh, I've been around a lot of that, man, all my life, you know what I mean? So, yeah. So it is important to have your your, your family and, I mean, if you can at least have one parent in your life. Yeah, and then... Your father did? No, he was in prison, too. He was in prison the worst. He was, he was in there. He did over uh, a, a lifetime sentence. And uh, when he was on the way out this last time, <clears throat> um, he ended up dying in the halfway house mm. on the way out. Yeah. Sorry. It's crazy. So, yeah. It's How crazy. Long, when was that? Uh, it was about almost three years ago, three, three, four years ago. And ha 
how did that hit you? Did that ha- like so, like you, you. Well, I mean, it's, you know, know, it's kind of hard to, to feel, you know, for somebody that ain't been there. But at the end of the day, you still know that's part of your history. You feel what I'm saying? And you're like, damn. You just, sometimes you just wish that he would have took a different, uh, different avenue in life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was a crazy motherfucker. He had a lot of stories to tell. He was one of a kind. But at the end of the day. When he, when he came in my life, it was kind of weird, you know what I mean? So it's weird. Right. Yeah. Did, it felt like it didn't Same thing with, with my mom, you know? Right. Yeah. It, so. it didn't quite fit. I guess when you show absence for so long, it's kind of hard to to tap back into it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Because there's not really anything to tap back into necessarily. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to try. I mean, at least they give the effort to try, though. Because uh-huh. some of them don't even give an effort for, to try. And ha- what's your feeling think of your parents what what do you how would you describe the feeling when you think of them like what do you mean like is there a feeling of of like peace is there a feeling oh yeah i mean I, i'm at peace you know what i'm saying i mean you know i got over all of that personally i mean it's hard for some people to get over because like, you got people like my brother man he, you do something to his ass 20 years ago he'll fucking bring it up today you know what i'm saying so some people it's hard to let go of shit but uh you know I just learned to let go because, you know, the past ain't going to help your future. You know what I'm saying? You got to you gotta learn how to re- do that reset. I call it a reset. I go meditate, shit like that. Back into the now. You know what I mean? Reset. Right. Go hit that jacuzzi, that, that steam room. Go hit, you know, a massage or something and just reset yourself and move forward in life. You know what I mean? Because the shit that happened in the past, you know, you can't allow that shit to haunt you. You know, uh, and I feel like we need resets all the time. Me, I need a reset every two weeks so I can continue to focus. Right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. And so how? Did, what, what? What? What was it that you did to reset? That's what I do. That's what I'm talking about. Like letting go with your parents. Oh, that. I mean, I just let go, bro. Like me. See, I study a lot of millionaires, bro. Uh-huh. That came from nothing. Mm-hmm. And the one thing they do is they learn how to hit that switch. So when you start seeing yourself down, you start thinking about all kind of crazy ass shit, trauma, shit that happened in your life, you got to hit that switch. It's like when you hit that light switch, psh, let it go. move forward. And, you know, if you, if you don't, you're just going to be sitting there dwelling, looking crazy. You're going to let it get to you. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's what you don't want because then it's called a distraction mm-hmm. of, of what's to come. You feel me? But yeah. So how was it for you? How was love for me? Like growing up with the, with the, yeah, both parents, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was dope. I, like, I'm grateful for yeah. the way my parents raised me. So, um, I don't know, they just exposed me to a lot very no. early on. And, and that stuff matters. Like, made sure that, you know, I was always capable. Mm. And, like, just believed in myself. Right. It's dope. It raised me to believe in myself. It's dope, man. So I think, like, I'm so grateful, you know, for, for how they raised me. How many different hustles have you had throughout your, your lifespan so far? Like, going all the way back to childhood? Yeah, like, like you're like, man, I, I used to hustle this. Or I did mean, you start early? Because I had some crazy stories when I was a kid. My first <laughs> little hustles and shit. <laughs> I feel tell me like some shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> nah, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I had no crazy stories, yeah. but... I mean, I was the dude, I went, speaking of South Park, Mexicans. Oh, shit, okay. Because I went to Jones and then Lamar. Yeah. Um, and so at Jones, like, I was the dude just hustling candy all day. Okay. My little blue backpack. See, I, I got those stories right there. Right. Okay, so you had the blue backpack? My little blue backpack. Hmm. I had, my, my motto was, I don't give a fuck. If you buy it, I will supply it. Hmm. <laughs> like, Damn. That's real. Right. That's not awesome. What, Jolly Ranch? Like, what? Fuck. Just tell me, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's good shit. And, and so, but like one day, because I became just fl- just flagrant with it. Like we just out here in the halls. Yeah. Just Going selling home. candy. And one of the <clears throat> administrators was like, come here. <laughs> right? And then took me to, what's the principal? What's the principal's name? Mr. Allen. Yeah. Mr. Allen said, anyway, don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, so, so what do you say? What do you say? 
they confiscated my money oh. and my product. He won on your they ass. They shut my shit down. Ooh, damn. They shut my Just shit. Just you know you're wrong damn. for that, man. For real though, we supposed to yeah. inspire the young entrepreneurs. Right, uh, right. Not just kill it in the cradle. What is that? That's malicious, bro. The car got raided. <laughs> I was a slick motherfucker. You know what I did? Huh. When, okay, so I sold candy too, right? And this is this is some crazy shit, man. Um, so they all knew I was a CPS kid, you know, child protective service. They they already knew, so I get dropped off, and I used to fuck up all the time. So they kind of let me slide here and there, but the, but they liked me, you know. They was like, you know, uh, we had a computer class back in the day. We had them big dinosaur computers and shit back in the day. And uh, like with like the ones with Oregon big Trail, big box, yeah, Oregon Trail and all that <laughs> shit. And uh, yeah, so the the computer class would go around to all the classes and sell candy to raise money. Right. Yeah, big ass boxes, and the, the teachers <sighs> would allow them to come in the class, go ahead, and walk around the class and collect money. And so my crazy ass, I went and bought a box of candy from the computer guy, from the, from the computer teacher. And then I skipped school. Like I skipped all my classes in elementary. You know, people don't even skip in elementary, bro. This right, is crazy. Right, right. But mine was to get money. So once I, he allowed me to buy the box, I went knocking on all the classes like if I was part of the computer class. Oh, snap. <laughs> right? That's some slick shit, right? You, made it, you like just kind of muscled into the territory. I did. On a solo endeavor. And so I knocked on the door. The teacher said, come on in. They figured I was with the computer class. Right. How I walk around. Make? I start making all the bread. I don't remember exactly, but I just sell out, though. Nice. And so out the water, they started seeing me with two, three boxes of candy. They're like, what the fuck going on? That's, we call that resource, resourcefulness. Yeah. Indeed. That's Indeed. a crazy story, though, man. It is. That was some slick shit. And it, it took my like, balls, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, because I was like, man, fuck last. I want to make some money. <laughs> I'm gonna skip all of the class. So I'm gonna steal this chocolate. I'm gonna skip just a just all around delinquent. <laughs> just didn't give a shit. That's some ruthless shit though too. But it's like also well done, <laughs> well done. Right, story. right. It's like man, that's a great story, you know. You know what you think about it? And then and then they'd have parent teacher day, and so my foster mom would come in, and uh, she wouldn't uh, she, she would have some good shoes and clothes like for Easter or something, but she would, badass Nikes and shit, she would hide it, you know, like, okay, she'd give it to us for that day, and then she'd put it up. Oh, wow, like ratcheting we, the Nike. Yeah, and then we, we we would have to, like, wear, like, jogging pants and shit. Motherfuckers make fun of us and shit in school. Like, dude, was like, it from the Payless nothing. rack? Huh? Was it from the Payless rack, the shoes? No, no, it, man, was they had badass Nikes. Nikes. Ah, okay. Like, like, dope shit, but the dope shit she wouldn't let us use in school. Ah. So then what I would do, I fucking would steal my own shit. Ain't that nothing that sound crazy? You gotta steal your own shoes. So right. I put this shit in my backpack, put this in my backpack. Did you ever get caught? Well, that's what I'm saying. So teacher, uh, parent day, they come to school. We had those desks with the hole in the side. Mm -hmm. Man, I had shoes up in there. I was already starting to create a shelf in glass. Oh, wow. So she said, man, I don't know what he's doing, but he got all of his clothes over here. Like he lives in here and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? He got <laughs> shoes and shit. Yeah, so, you know, they were like, what the fuck? He, what did, what, did, what did your mom say? I got an ass whooping. You know, back then, I was young enough to where they were doing, uh, you got to write 100 sentences. And I'd be like, I will not do this. That's like, uh, yeah. yeah, it's like super, super that's old school. Yeah, man. <laughs> and they would fuck me up, bro. Like, they already knew I'd write 100 sentences fast. Right. And I'd be done. So then it'd be like 500 sentences. Oh, wow. Then it'd be like 1,000 sentences. Be like, you, must, you must hate the act of writing. I'd be there all motherfucking night. Just writing sentences. I will not. And I said, but I, 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 will, 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 will. I just, and he used to see the roles moving like this. We call that batch work. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> a way to be efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Did it ever sink in, though? Or, like? I was just trying to get that shit done so I could move forward every time. I see. So so it never it never was a well, I mean, see, I went from 100 sentences to, like, over 1,000. You know, like shit, and I and I don't think at that time, like I really realized what I was doing. I was just, you know, going through a lot in my own mind. You right, feel me? Right. I was getting moved around different schools, doing all kinds right, of different right, shit. Right. So you know, now I think back, like, damn, I was a fucking 
hard headed motherfucker, you know what I mean? I used to do some crazy shit. And, you know, uh, what the yeah. fuck was I thinking? Right. Some yeah, of that shit, you know what I mean? It's I mean also in that situ- in that kind of situation and it's almost like you have to guide yourself in a way. Yeah. Which is it's, it's that's a lot. I mean, my dad, my mom and dad weren't just, so I felt like, hey, if they went to prison for some shit, I felt like that was my fucking destiny. That's how I felt when oh, I was really? a kid. I did. I was like, I don't give a damn. I guess I'm just a fuck up then. So I didn't give a shit. You know, I felt like I'm just going to fuck up. I'm going to do whatever. Do you think? This is my destiny. I felt that. Do you think maybe it's because, like, you missed your parents and you might have felt like this could be a way to, like, get close to them? No, none of that. No. I just felt like it was a destiny of mine. Yeah. Like... If it happened to both of them, you got to think about it. If it's your parents, right, and and say both of them are, are bosses, right, or business owners, you're going to feel like, hey, that's my destiny. I'm going to be a business owner, too. It's just like the expectation. You know, I'm just like, yeah. Right. Like, well, damn. I'm just out here. I'm supposed to be fucking up. And, you know, it took for me to fuck up a shitload of times mm-hmm. to learn, you know what I mean, to say, damn, I got to do better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Do those things come like come with time and age, you know, just yeah. having a more mature vision and just kind of like being tired of fighting, basically, because yeah. that is tiring. Well, no, when you run away from them places and, you know, you think that something else is out there and you run away and then you run away to be homeless. Mm-hmm. When you had a, everything in there, you had the, the mills and the, you know, the, the roof <laughs> over your head and all the <laughs> shit, and you take it for granted because they're giving it to you. And you run away, boy. When I run away, it was over. I'm like, what the fuck do I do now? Mm-hmm. You know? So what did you do? Some crazy stories, man. <laughs> but one time, shout out my Uncle Loopy, man. But uh, none of my family really ever came to see us. One day, four of my uncles, or three of my uncles, came to see us. It was my Uncle Loopy, my Uncle Pepito, and my Uncle Ray. And I, I didn't know them. like a Tio Pepito. Somewhere. Yeah, and, you know, and I didn't, I, I didn't know them, you know. Rest right. in peace, Pepito, you know. But they came, and they're like, hey, we're your uncles, da-da-da-da. We were like, damn, this is crazy. Finally a family member. Mm-hmm. And uh, my Uncle Lupe slipped me his number. He says, if you ever need anything, you call me. So when I ran away, I, I wasn't going to call him right away unless I needed him. Mm-hmm. So my first instinct, survival mode. Mm-hmm. Damn, what the fuck am I going to do out here now? It was cold out there. Mm-hmm. You need a jacket. I went to Fiesta, right. and I, I knew they had them dickies and shit up in there. Right. So I motherfucking grabbed me a dicky suit, put it on under my clothes, you know, changed it out. And when I was walking out, the loss prevention grabbed me. Hey, where you going? Boom. So I got caught that quick. I think it was less than two hours. Uh, they grabbed my motherfucking ass. Show me on camera. Where's your parents? Um... I didn't want to tell him I was in a uh, group home or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I called my Uncle Loopy. Mm-hmm. It was like 3, 4 in the morning. He's like, what the fuck? He lived in the southeast. I was like in the heights. Mm-hmm. So he had to drive like a fucking hour just to come pick me up in the middle. Of the night. He goes, motherfucker, I got to work in the morning. You can't be doing this kind of shit. You know? And then so I ended up there. And he 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 kept me fed and okay. and good. He, put, he enrolled me in school, the okay. CPS. Okay. Uh, motherfucker said, you know what? It's okay as long as you enroll him in school, da 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 da. And his plan was to get me to my dad. Okay. And after like some time passed by, he drove me personally down to Chicago, mm-hmm. and, and and that's when I moved in with my dad. I see. It was wild. How old were How old were you? I don't even recall it, man. But I was a teenager by that time. Okay. I was probably like 13, 14. And what was that? What was that? I mean, that's a whole new experience, no? You hadn't been with your dad. Yeah, you know, since forever. So what, what did that feel like? Uh, well, it was cool. It was like, all right, well, I'm here. <laughs> Until I start fucking up in school. Uh-huh. Which that was like immediately because I was already like basically like a fuck up, basically. I hate to say it like that, but I was a gangster. I was fucking gang banging. You know, and I, that's what, I, you know, it's like I said earlier, you get what you attract, you know. So like, you know, me, I didn't give a fuck. I, I was raised out here. We was doing all kind of crazy shit. So when I get to Chicago and over there and, uh, I was hanging with the gangsters, you know what I'm saying? And he was an OG gangster. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. yeah, no, my dad. Oh, your dad, okay. He was a Latin king, you know what I'm saying? And he was in prison with all of them. He was like one of the bodyguards of one of the 
one of the main Latin kings of Chicago. Okay. Um, but that, well, that just tells you, tells you how much rank he had. Right, right. He was a crazy motherfucker. But uh, so when I would fuck up out there in the streets, he'd be like, my uncle would snitch me out, man, because uh, I would skip school. And the school would call the house at a certain time to report that I didn't go to school or that I missed class. My uncle would pick up the phone and then he would snitch me out to my dad when he would come home and then I'd get my ass beat. And so it was crazy because I was getting my ass beat from somebody I didn't really even know. Right. And then so that made me like want to run away, like fuck this shit. Like man, how the fuck you gonna beat my motherfucking ass? You know, I don't even know you like that. So I would run away and I would go hide in the gangsters' houses and shit. But he was an OG. And the ones I would hang around with, there was a lot of Latin kings and shit. So he, he'd go over there and he would, you know, as an OG, he would say, I'm, a, I'm your fucking OG no matter what. You know, I got that rank, basically. You're going to tell me where my son is at. I'm going to violate the fuck out of all you motherfuckers. Because he was crazy. And they would give me up. <laughs> he was over there in the closet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, I went through a lot of crazy shit, bro. Did you end up staying there or did you? No, I, after so many ass whoopings and shit like that, crazy shit, uh, I, I ended up getting the fuck out of there. Uh, I found my mother. Okay. I found my mother on my own. Uh, well, this guy that I knew out there, he had a show, a uh, 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 snow shoveling uh, 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 company. You know, the trucks with the... Sh with the Shovels on the front, and uh, I used to work for him and shit. One of my homies hooked me up with him where I could go to work and make some bread. And uh, he knew a lawyer, and the lawyer said, well, the first thing you need to do is look in the system and see if the mother uh, takes any kind of government assistance. And then that's how they found her. Boom. And, but all they had was the address. And so I wrote the address. And a letter came, well, my sister Belinda, she was in Colorado at the time. And uh, that's how, you know, uh, she called me. She said, well, she don't live with me no more, but she's in Missouri. This is her number. They tapped me in, and then I'm on, my, I'm on my way in the bus to Missouri out of nowhere. Right. It was like culture shock, too. Like, right, crazy as hell, man. And then I was like, because it's like the old, old white towns and shit. We're like, I, I, I wasn't used to that. No, we used to the big cities and shit. Right, right. <clears throat> Motherfucker waving at you. Right. You'd be like, what the fuck are you waving at? That's what I... Yeah, yeah I learned how it was on you know? uh -huh. Some friendly shit, you know what I mean? Exactly. But... That's how it should be, though. Yeah, but 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 it was different. You know, I went through a lot of shit, man. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> so how was it for you? Like, you didn't have to go through none of that shit? No, I, my childhood was just magnificent and blessed, yeah. honestly. Like, Compared to that shit, huh? <laughs> So that's why I say I'm thankful for my parents and how they, yeah. you know, raised me. That's what's so, up, man. So, so what do you do for a living now? So I'm building my business around sustainable agriculture. Okay. And Talk a little bit about that. What is that exactly? So that has everything to do with improving the quality of food. Okay. And basically, how do you help producers eliminate chemical inputs mm. without sacrificing how much they can grow yeah. and the quality of it. Mm. And so... Sounds like something that we need, for sure, because we're... I feel like we're, we're poisoned by everything we eat these days. It certainly appears that way. Right. You know? Yeah. And so it's just really... It's, it's getting back to standards. Like, right. reaffirming standards. Like, all this... Because I feel like we, we, we trust... Too much. Well, I mean, that has to do with getting back to standards, too. That's like the right. standard of believing in yourself. Right. You know? And so that's the bottom line with, I feel like, anything we do, this podcast, right? Right. Like, you guys, you like, it's like professional, it's well done. Right. You know, you guys are upholding standards. So right. when it comes to food, like, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, let's eat some, like, beautiful since whole food right. right like clean the best and just eat the best so that's what's I mean that's why I was in Colombia um, and 
that's like that's where the action is primarily for this vision of what I call the Garden 2.0. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Crazy. And so. That's good. That's very interesting. So, so you went to school for that, or what? Or you just met some good people, or what? All of the above. Hmm. I mean, I went to school. So, so many things. So many things. Right. But I did like an, an MBA in sustainable business and green energy. Hmm. And then I d- no. dug a little deeper into hmm. sustainability after that. Um, and then I got pulled into like the agricultural world while I was doing that that MBA. It, hmm. This was in Italy. Before no. Colombia, I was in Italy. Yeah. No. And so just got really, like the vision started to clarify in terms of I don't know what I'm interested in mm. when it comes to how do you help facilitate uh, or liberate the creative energies of the human being. Mm. Again, make parenting great again. Mm. Going back to what we were just talking about. Yeah. Right. Let's so go. there's you can do that through the material on the material side, food, energy, manufacturing, whatever. Let's or you go. can do it on the psychological side. Right. Hashtag make parenting great again. Mm. Inner belief, like just believe and have fun, right? And keep a light heart, mm. and maintain your vision. Like believe in your vision. It's dope. Go for it. Here we are. Mm. Like, how you guys are doing? Yeah. And everyone does it in their own way, mm-hmm. according to what they find interesting. For sure. Like not about what they heard or whatever. Mm. So. So yeah, this is you know this is what it's about the Garden 2.0, you know a land of many Edens and countless Supremes. Hmm. Just marinate, let that marinate. Sounds a land great. of many Edens and countless Supremes. Explain that a little bit. I mean, it's the vision. It starts with the idea that like it's up to us, each individual, and together to quote unquote get back to the garden. Mm. At this point, like, and we have we're children of God, right? Are we not? Yeah. And so, as children of of God, we have that same, you know, Christ power. Let's mm. say to okay. maximize peace and love. Mm. And so, again, there's so many ways to do that. Right. The Garden Two Point Zero is. <clears throat> a place where the food supply on earth mm-hmm. approximates abundance. So that's one part. The so is it a team of you guys, or is it you, t- you put in some So I'm just starting this. Mm. Just starting this. No. Um, but this, I mean, because what does it say in the Bible? A, a nation of people without a vision perish. Mm. Damn. And so it's, I mean, you had your, like, you've got, you've got, you've gone through everything that you went through because you had your own inner vision. Right. Whether it was faint, whether it was coming through, just pumping at 100 miles an hour, like, it's, it's carries you to here, no, hmm. despite your story. Exactly. You know? And so it's always about the vision and then, and then executing it again. Hmm. Feel that. You see what I'm saying? That's dope. I'm excited for it, man. I want to be a part of it, man. If you uh, if you ever need any kind of graphic design or you know, any kind of guidance on that kind of stuff, or even promo, we, we could even come back on here at a later date and promote it a little bit once you got it rolling. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, that's, that sounds great. I think we need more of that. Yeah. And it sounds interesting because I don't see nobody else out here talking about something like that. You know, again, it's like... I'm, I'm sure you're probably around it, but me, I, I'm really not around that kind of stuff. I mean, so that's why it's good to have mm-hmm. somebody different in here mm-hmm. to, to, to talk about it, to shed light on that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I appreciate yeah. the, like, the welcome. Yeah, you know, for sure. The opportunity just to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, man, it's dope. You know, we hit so many topics and yeah. everything. So, yeah, it's good to connect. Hell yeah. And for sure, we should do it again. For sure, man. Yeah. Well, damn, man, I'm going to wrap it up, man, so we won't go too too long. I think my producer's over there falling asleep and shit. I don't no, I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking. 
Don't kill me, man. Don't kill me. Nah, but look, uh, let everybody know where they can find you. Oh, y'all can't find me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Can't find them, my boy. You can't find them. Uh, you you got to go through Mo Hustle. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you, our, the website, mm -hmm. there's trig, T-R-I-G hyphen O-S. Okay. Dot com. Mm -hmm. And actually, as a side project, um, establish an incense company with the best incense producer mm. in the USA. Okay, you do that? It's like a little, it's a, yeah. Right. It's so, so, so you know how to fuck with chemicals and shit? Like some... So I'm not the one that is, I'm not the one that's creating the incense. Mm. That's what I partnered with. Because you get that wholesale I running. Mean, you know, we're, we're running this to get like partner. Like okay, buy, I got you. Buy, okay. Right? Like she's the artist and, okay. I'm, and I'm the one bringing the organization and, so. and connecting Really, what I would say is the best incense right now, for sure, in Houston. And mm -hmm. I know there's a generation of y'all that already know Simone. Because she's right. been in it since 93. Well, what, it, what, it, what is their brand name? Simone. Simone. And so when you go to trig-os as an operating system, okay. dot com, one of the pages is Simone. Okay. And our debut fragrance hmm. is their hypnotic. Hypnotic. I mean, it's pre like the, the ingredients are premium, and it's all about going back to what we've discussed before. How do you communicate peace through fragrance? Mm. It's coming right back to the. Oh, yeah, man, that, 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 that uh, lavender. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey, I, hey, I like a little mixture of lavender with a little bit of orange. That's, I mean, that's, there's a that's nice, pretty good. There's a nice balance in that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The citrus is kind of like zesty. Mm. Lavender is kind of like calming. Yeah. Right. It's like the yin yeah. I'll put yang. that in the I'll put that in the steam room. <laughs> up in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead of smelling that funk. Oh lord. You know, it's not funky all the time, but you right, know I don't want to smell right. nobody else's funk in the damn gym. Honestly. So put a little bit of that, man. You're gonna be relaxed. You're gonna be feeling good. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man. That's what's up. You got any shout outs? I just want to shout out God. Okay. You know. Okay. Don't stop. That's what's up. <laughs> Hey, that's what's up, though. That's what's up, man. <laughs> As a matter of fact. Yeah, that's you know, dope. That's dope. Because that's the shout out everybody. You know, we're one. Yeah. That's the point. Right. Like, we're one. Okay. So, I'm also shouting out myself. Shouts out to me. You know what I'm saying? That's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Let me. <laughs> yeah. give you, you ever seen that? When you give yourself a hug and you be looking through the back, it looks like yeah, that's it. two people hugging and shit. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know I mean, <laughs> two people making out it look like that when you're hugging yourself. That's it. That's it. <laughs> just love on yourself. That's what's up. Easy, pause, easy. pause, pause, pause. Uh, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> but nah, nah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, man, we're going to get up out of here, man. Uh, it's your boy, Mo Hustle. You already know what it Shouts is. Shout out to Mo Hustle. Hey, man, I appreciate Honestly, that. Honestly, and, and the crew. Yeah. It's fine individuals here making it all happen yeah working so diligently you know what i'm saying and uh <laughs> y'all make sure to subscribe to the channel we're gonna have a lot more interviews like this you know uh and keep the conversation going like yeah. you know as other guests come through oh every right. time man you know I, you know it's, it's always different because mm -hmm. everybody got a different story everybody got a different life right and uh it's, it's a great thing man this podcast the hot seat is one of a kind man out of h-town I don't think anybody in H Town is doing something like this. H Town, Third Ward, Texas, Trey all, right. all day. All day, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Follow me on Instagram at the Real Mo Hustle. Hit that subscribe one time. We out this joint. Bye. All right. Boom. That was good. <laughs>